Okay, this is the second half of a presentation on the Laplace random variable, the Laplace distribution. So in this distribution, in this question, f of x, the probability density function, we found it to be lambda divided by 2 times the exponential of minus lambda times the absolute value of x. Okay, that's the important there, the absolute value of x. So the question that we're going to look at is to find the mean and variance of x. So previously we have found that the value of k was lambda over 2. So we'll just take lambda over 2 as given. And we found the cumulative distribution function of x to be uh, the value we found it to be. That's good. So I'll just go back to where we are. So what we have to do is find the, the expected value of x. And by definition, that is the definite integral from minus infinity to infinity of x times f of x dx. So what I'm going to do is, because I'm dealing with the absolute value function, I am going to split it up into two parts, where x is less than 0 and where x is greater than 0. So the first part here is the definite integral from minus infinity to 0 of x times f of x dx, plus the definite integral of, uh, from 0 to infinity of x times f of x dx. Okay? Okay, I just paused the video a second just to write in the probability density function here up at the top. Now the key thing here is that we have, let's just read it out, lambda over 2 divided by uh, times the exponential of minus lambda times the absolute value of x. So this is the important thing here. What happens when x is negative number, the absolute value of that is minus x. So minus lambda times minus x is lambda x. Okay, so that's plus lambda x there. And in the case of x greater than or equal to 0, the absolute value of x is simply x. So minus lambda times the absolute value of x is, the, is e to the minus lambda x. So plus lambda x when x is less than 0 and minus lambda x, well, sorry, I should say the exponential of plus lambda x when x is less than 0, and the exponential of minus lambda x when x is greater than or equal to 0. So just watch out for that key difference there, okay, between the two parts. So as well as the, the limits of integration being different, we actually have different signs on the power, plus lambda x and minus lambda x for with the power of e. So previously I mentioned, I'll just go back to this again, in a previous video, the importance of being able to being integrate quickly an expression that involves the ex the exponential function there, e to the x, okay? And that is particularly important, again, because they do crop up a lot, and you will be expected to be very quick on these. So just actually make a note of those mentally, practice them, write them down, but you should be able to sort of go through them very quickly in an exam situation. So I'll go back down to my question there. That's just the last video. And where was I? There we go. So in the first case we have where x is less than or equal to 0, we have the integral from minus infinity to 0 of x times lambda over 2 times the e to the lambda x dx. Okay. And where x is greater than 0, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of x times lambda over 2 times the exponential of minus lambda x dx. Okay, so what we can do is take lambda over 2 out of the expression in both cases, and what we're left with is x times e to the minus lambda x dx for that integral, and then on this integral we have x times e to the minus lambda x dx. So essentially what we're looking at there is integration by parts. So where x is less than 0, this is how integration by parts would work out. So first off, we have the indefinite integral and then the definite integral. Likewise, we have the same down here later on for where x is greater than 0. We have the indefinite integral and the definite integral. So it's the integral of x times the exponential of lambda x dx. Okay, working that out, you should get this expression here. I'll let you do it yourself, to be honest with you. Uh, uv minus the integral of v du. When you integrate it from minus infinity to zero, you will get 
minus 1 over lambda squared. Okay. When x is greater than or equal to 0, you should get this expression here, 1 over lambda squared. When you evaluate the definite integral from 0 to infinity. Okay. Now, luckily, we have minus infinity times x, uh, where we evaluate it there. So we have, in both cases, e to the minus infinity, and again, that is equal to zero. Okay, so, yeah, that's, uh, uh, there's a good bit of work in there, but ultimately, integration by parts, uh, integrating exponential functions, it's long, but it should be straightforward enough. Just be quick at it, okay? So I won't gonna, I'm not going to do it in this case because it actually should be straightforward stuff in this uh, going forward. So we, we piece everything together to get the expected value of x, which we know and um, we expect to be 0 anyway. So the answers to the definite integral calculations, minus 1 over lambda squared and plus 1 over lambda squared, essentially what we do is multiply both cases by lambda over 2 and essentially what we get is 1 over 2 lambda minus 1 over 2 lambda plus 1 over 2 lambda which cancels out so we get 0 okay that's what we we're expecting and that's how we show it so to get the variance what we need is the expected value of x squared now because the expected value of x is 0 essentially this is equivalent to the variance okay now so the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x squared times f of x dx, uh, that's what we do. So again, we break it up into two parts, okay? Just like we've done before for the expected value of x, this time we have x squared there, okay? And we can take out the lambda over 2 out of the integral in both cases. So, again, what we have here is a definite integral. Now, there's a good bit of work in this. I have to admit there is a good bit of work in doing these. But what I'm going to do is make you do it. x less than or equal to 0. The indefinite integral works out at this expression here. And that's a good bit of work there. I won't lie. But when we get the definite integral, it should sort of cascade down into something very straightforward. When we integrate... From minus infinity to zero, the integral of x squared times e to the uh, lambda x dx, we should get 2 over lambda cubed. Okay? I'm taking the easy way out here this time. I'm not going to do it for you. Um, when I calculate the, for x greater than or equal to zero, that is the indefinite integral there. Okay? You can work it out like as follows. I have it simplified down here in this case. I'll leave it as a worked exercise there. It's actually very straightforward. It's an integration by parts nested inside another integration by parts. You just have to simplify it out. It's long, it's tedious, but it's actually very straightforward. Okay, and I won't spend any of your precious time trying to how to explain it. You might even get told a hint. Okay. Anyway, when you evaluate that in definite integral, you also get 2 over lambda cubed. So you get 2 over lambda cubed in both instances. Okay. So let's calculate the expected value of x squared. Okay. So remember, we have the definite integrals there, but we have to pre-multiply them by lambda over 2. Again, because we take it out of the expression there, so we have to put it back in. Don't forget that times 2 over lambda cubed in both cases so we get 1 over lambda squared plus 1 over lambda squared that means we have our expected value of x squared is 2 over lambda squared so to get the variance that is this is a key identity that you're expected to know in this case the expected value of x to be squared is 0 squared so essentially this is the variance there 2 over lambda squared, and that is the answer. Okay, a lot of work there, but you're, you're up to it. Okay, we'll leave it there.